Welcome back to Math Practice with Mrs. Smith. Come on, seriously? Do you have to get right in front of the camera? Can you see me here? I'm right behind you. Well, anyway, welcome to Math Practice. Ugh. Come on, guys, really? <sighs> Working with dragons is so difficult. Well, here we go. Today we're going to practice finding common denominators. When we add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators, we have to find equivalent fractions we can turn them into where the two fractions would both have a common denominator or the same denominator. Like this example, when we're adding two-fourths plus one-sixth. One fraction is in fourths, one fraction is in sixths. To add those, we have to first find common denominator. We have to find an equivalent fraction we can change them into where they'll both have the same denominator. That means we need to get familiar with our multiples of four and our multiples for six. We need to choose a multiple that would be in both numbers. So in this case, we can change both fractions to twelfths. Twelve is a multiple of four, twelve is a multiple of six. It will work for both of them. If you're not sure how to turn these into equivalent fractions, then you can watch my other video on equivalent fractions. Today, we're focusing on just finding common denominators. But if we were adding these, we would find equivalent fractions and turn them into twelfths. And we would add them up. We would get eight twelfths. But that's just a bonus, because we're not adding fractions in this video. We're just discovering a good common denominator to use for when we are adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. In this example, if we were adding 3 fourths plus 2 twelfths, we would want to find a common denominator, because right now, one has a denominator of 4, and the other fraction has a denominator of 12. So I'm going to think first about the multiples of 4. So we have 4, 8, 12. Hey, 12 is a multiple of 4, and the other fraction is already in 12. So I know 12 will work. I would choose 12 for my common denominator, which means I would change both of these fractions into twelfths. Twelve is the common denominator I would use to help me solve this problem. And now we interrupt this quick math review for the adventure of a lifetime. Denominators and dragons. Once upon a time there was this scary dragon who scared everybody away from town. He had this math problem to solve but he couldn't decide what to use for a common denominator. Can you help him so he can leave? Should he use two, four, or six? What do you think? Please say it out loud so the scary dragon knows which number to save and use for his common denominator. The other numbers will get blown away. Yay, you did it! He should use four as a common denominator for these two fractions. You saved the town! And this scary dragon left peacefully. Uh, but then the next day, another dragon came. Have the same situation. With this problem to solve, help him choose a good common denominator and save the town. Should he use four, eight, or two? Which one would be best for a common denominator? Hurry and say it out loud, there's not much time. The other numbers will get blown away. Yes, you did it again. He should use eight for a common denominator. Oh, good, because he loves eight. We'll just let him take that one with him. He looks happy. Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> oh, here you go. You can have it. I don't want you to be sad. Oh, thank you. And that's how the town was saved from the... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. 
Okay, so here's a new dragon with a new problem to solve. What should she use for a common denominator? Should she use 2, 8, or 12? And say it out loud, because she's going to glitter fire those other numbers. Here she goes. I hope you were right. She's going to use the 12, just like you said, right? And just like that, poof, she used her dragon powers to disappear. And that really is how you saved the whole town from scary math dragons. The end. See you next time. Uh-oh.